Hey guys, if you're enjoying this podcast, then I know you enjoy the Girl Dad Discussion Podcast. I'm your host, Ernest James, and I believe the relationship between a daughter and her father is one of the most important relationships a young lady can have. And therefore, my mission is to promote the daddy-daughter relationship by sharing the voices of girl dads to the world. So check out our podcast on every platform where podcasts can be listened to. And if you want to watch the podcast, check us out on our YouTube channel. Again, that's the Girl Dad Discussions Podcast with your host, Ernest James. Are you looking for inspiration on a daily basis? Well, check out Give to Heal Tees. With our inspirational tees, you're sure to find something that will inspire you. Just go to dealtoheeltees.myshopify.com. That's Deal to Heal Tees. Get some inspiration in your situation. Wear inspirational tea and be inspired all day. That's Deal to Heal Teas at Deal to Heal Teas dot my Shopify dot com. Hey guys, this is Ernest James, host of the Deal to Heal with E. James podcast. And I got a question to ask you. Could you buy me a cheeseburger? Better yet, could you buy me a value meal? Yes? Well, guess what? I don't need a value meal. However, for the cost of a value meal, you can support this podcast to keep us on the air. Just go to Patreon slash Deal to Heal podcast and choose any one of the three tiers that's available. And if you just want to make a one-time donation, go to Cash App and make a donation to dollar sign E. James, the number 418. Make a one-time donation to the Cash App or again, go to Patreon to support this podcast and keep us on the air. Thanks in advance. Be blessed. Welcome to Deal to Heal with E. James Podcast. On this podcast, My guest and I will discuss topics and ways to help us to heal in every area of our lives. I believe that everyone can live a life that is happy, healthy, and whole. So I'm on a mission to help people to deal, heal, and fulfill. Deal with your problem, heal from the pain, and fulfill your purpose. Thanks for tuning in. Let's get to it. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Deal to Heal with E. James podcast. I am your host, Ernest James, and I believe that everyone can and should live a life that is whole, healed, and healthy. And therefore, I'm on a mission to help people to deal, heal, and fulfill, to deal with your problems, to heal from the pain, and fulfill your purpose. Thank you guys once again for tuning in to the Deal to Heal with E. James podcast. If you haven't already, Make sure that you subscribe to our podcast on our uh, YouTube channel, our uh, Spotify, everywhere that you can hear and listen to uh, podcasts. Make sure that you guys are following us. And uh, we definitely appreciate that, especially on our YouTube. We're trying to get our YouTube uh, subscriptions up. And on our YouTube channel, when you subscribe to the YouTube channel, not only do you get the deal to heal with EJ's podcast, but you also get the uh, Girl Dead Discussions podcast, which is also a podcast under that same channel. So I know you guys heard the the um, ad at the very beginning of the podcast. So it is the Girl Dead Discussions podcast, which is our uh, partner podcast. So make sure that you guys are doing that. Um, so also I'm going to tell you guys how you can win $100 from the podcast, but you got to stay until the end of the episode in order to get that information. Make sure that you guys are also checking us out on our website, dealhealfulfill.org. That's dealhealfulfill.org. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, towards the end of the episode. But today, just like any other day, we are blessed with a guest, Dr. Carmen. How are you doing? Oh, I'm so excited to be here with you. Yes, yes. First of all, let me say thank you for being on because you could have been doing anything, uh, anything else, but you're here with us, uh, me and my listeners, and we definitely appreciate it and wanted you to know that uh, up front. So thank you very much for being here. So, Doc, do me a favor. 
introduce yourself to my listeners and tell uh, tell us who you are and what it is that you do. Yes, thank you so much. So first off, things that are most important to me, I'm a mom, I have an incredible 16 year old son, I'm a wife to an amazing man. Um, so that's a little bit of my personal stuff um, <laughs> happening in my world. But in terms of my uh, professional background, I'm a psychology instructor uh, and professor. And so my background is in uh, mental health, uh, looking at social issues, how all of the things, all of the aspects of our lives impact our mental health. And so one of the things that I'm very clear that I was put on the planet to do was to help to empower girls and women. And I'm very, very clear that boys and men are an important part of that equation. So a little bit of what I do. Yes, yes. And, and I'm Definitely uh, here on this podcast, we definitely are a big um, supporter and component of, of therapy and, and mental health in that whole field. And uh, definitely we can talk about that some. But uh, we came across each other. Uh, speaking of the Girl Dead Discussions podcast, we came across each other because you, you hit me up on Inc. Instagram and you sent me a, a post of something that you were doing, which I thought was amazing. Right. And it was um, around the I can't even think of it exactly the way that you that it was spoken. So I'll let I'll let you do it. But it was around of a pro a program that you're doing, encouraging dads to talk to their daughters about uh, their periods, if I'm not mistaken. And yeah. especially with the girl girl dad discussions podcast, which we did record, and uh, by the time this is out, that should be out. So if you guys definitely want to hear a very entertaining conversation <laughs> about dads and dealing with uh, uh, young ladies and, and our daughters and talking to them about our periods, um, that was a very entertaining yet educational um, episode that we did. So please go make sure you guys go and check out. Um, the Girl Dad Discussions podcast with Dr. Carmen as a guest. Um, but we, we that's how we kind of came across, uh, across each other. And so before we even get into that, um, do me a favor. So what was the thing that kind of stirred you even not only to become a, a, a therapist, but also to even take on that, that challenge of you know, empowering young women? How did that even, how did you even, what was your journey to get you to there? Yeah, absolutely. So um, first, at growing up as a girl and a woman myself, um, and uh, with a very, very um, incredible dad, very, very socially aware, you know, he would talk to us about, you know, what was happening in the world, what was happening internationally, you know, so uh, we, were, we grew up being very just observant of like social processes, you know, like what's going mm -hmm. on? Um, and so when I, after completing my master's degree and my, and um, a little bit before actually completing my doctorate degree, I started teaching uh, psychology of women. And this is probably what really had me delve into this particular area is I started looking at lots of the things that are impacting um, the mental health and well-being of girls and women started taking a really serious, you know, sort of look at the social structures, you know, that are in place. And one of the things that uh, I started really sort of academically paying attention to was how a very normal part of development, mm -hmm. uh, talking about puberty and menstruation, has such a negative stigma around it yeah. that girls and grown women are fearful. They're experiencing anxiety, some of them trauma. And I can tell you a story about this in a second. And I was like, wait a minute, we need this process in order for the human species to continue. So mm -hmm. why does it have such a negative stigma? Why is there not at least a neutral stance, let alone a respectful, uh, you know, stance to it. So that's kind of how I started getting my feet wet um, and talking with people, working with people um, around 
the what I call the power of the period, right? It's really, really a powerful thing. And it's not only powerful for girls and women, but let me tell you that it's powerful when boys and men understand the phases of the cycle. Mm -hmm so that they know how to be supportive and how to be an ally. So I see it as a benefit for everybody. Yeah, yeah. And and I know, uh, so I, I, I've been married twice, right? So I've, I've had uh, <laughs> two wives and I have a daughter, I have five sisters and of course a mom. So definitely surrounded by women, you know, yet and still, um, even though I personally know that, okay, this is going on growing up, uh, the way that we were taught, you know, I never seen it. Right. I never seen the effects of it. I never seen the residue of it. You know what I mean? It was like, I know it's happening. And I remember even, uh, when my daughter got to the point where she was old enough, uh, that she's had her first period, uh, I was at work and her mom called me like, Hey, this is what's going on. You know? And so I, I did have the, conversation somewhat with my daughter uh, afterwards because of, of, of course I want to, her to be able to talk to me about anything, you know, and definitely this was a big thing, a big change that she was going through uh, for the first time and definitely wanted to be her. And, and she was a daddy's girl. She still is a daddy's girl, you know? And so it was like, okay, this is another part of uh, our relationship that, can help to make us stronger. And I know that's something that you uh, speak on a lot of to be able to, um, you know, when, when fathers take a strong stance or a forward stance, you know, in this area that it, it, it strengthens our bond with our daughter. So if you could just speak on that a little bit, you know, to just to the, not, we'll, we'll talk about the mothers in a second, but just the <laughs> fathers, because it's such a taboo subject, right? So I remember even growing up, like I said, I got five sisters and I don't know if it was maybe my sisters, one of my sisters asked me first or maybe one of my girlfriends later on. But I definitely remember being asked, you know, would you go get my personals as they was called, you know, could you go, you know, buy me some personals? And me personally, knowing I know boys, I know men and still is like, no, we're not we're not going, you know, but me, like I said, I, I've been live with women my whole life so it was nothing for me like yeah yeah i'll go i'll get it it's you know it's normal um but that's generally not the stance that fathers and men in general take so if you just speak to the dads and the, and the fathers or just you know just the men in general right now um just to tell you know i guess you could just encourage it i'll let you take it but <laughs> and the part that how this really could be a benefit and their relationships with their daughters. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So first off, uh, and I know we're gonna talk about moms in a second because they're, they're important too, mm -hmm. but for dads, dads are so critical for the self-esteem development of their daughters, for the self-worth development of their daughters, for the self-respect development of their daughters. Like dads are critical and there are lots of studies out there that show that you know in the beginning you know daddy's girl dads and da daughters are close they got all the pictures on facebook you know when she's four five six they cute they got their shades on but one of the things you notice if you look on a lot of the groups on facebook that are daddy daughter girl dad facebook uh, groups mm -hmm. a lot of the pictures when the girls get to be 11, 12, 16, then pictures start fading off, right? And that is possibly a reflection of the fact that many girls feel like their dads are distancing themselves as they're developing into a young woman. And this is not to place blame anywhere, just to point out that girls can feel the distancing. And so a lot of times it has to do with dads feeling sort of, you know, awkward about, um, you know, their girls developing into a young woman. This is daddy's baby girl. This is a little princess. And they want to keep that perception in yeah. their minds. Well, we know that kids not supposed to stay, stay kids. They're supposed right. to, you know, grow up and be contributors to their community and all of that stuff. Right. That's what we want. 
and we want them to be prepared to do so. And so dads are so valuable as a part of that preparation, because when you're talking, when you can lean in dads, when you can feel the fear and do it anyway, because I know that you're scared of the fact that she can now get pregnant. I know, you know, you're scared of the fact that you don't know what the heck is going on and you don't feel knowledgeable even raising it with, you know, raising the issue. So you might be afraid of saying the wrong thing. So I know like those obstacles that exist, but I can definitely help you with that. And so when you can lean in, when you receive the knowledge, because you got to have some knowledge and yeah. you got to have some skill, some communication skill to be able to lean in to this particular period of development, right? Talking about puberty, <laughs> then what that's going to do is that's going to demonstrate to your baby girl that you have her back. You don't want her feeling you know, you're distancing, you're pulling away, the separation. That's the time where she needs to feel even closer to you, right? When she's going into adolescence, because she's going to be having romantic relationships or some crushes or, you know, whatever. Um, and you want her to be prepared. You want to role play with her. You want to tell her what to look out for. And, and, you know, when dads can muster the courage, because like we know this is a taboo topic, but when dads can set that aside, like, okay, Hey, I'm going in for my daughter and muster the courage to have these conversations. It just builds and fosters a strong, trusting father-daughter bond that lasts a lifetime. Yeah, and, and I know it's a um, <laughs> it's a taboo subject, you know, and we, again, like you said, we definitely want our daughters to, to stay our little princesses, you know, forever, but they, they grow up. Uh, like I, I say often, my baby's not a baby no more. She's 20, you know, <laughs> so <laughs> I don't even have a little baby no more, but I do have granddaughters now. So that's a whole nother subject. But <laughs> but even even that, and like I said, growing up, uh, my my mom and of course my, my grandmother, even my sisters, being surrounded by women, you know, I've heard or should I say overheard the conversations of you know, how to, to carry yourself, how to take care of yourself, you know, during these times. Uh, of course, I wasn't in for the whole conversation, but I did remember having these conversations and uh, they must have been really good conversations. Cause like I said, I never seen any, any uh, residue of it. You know what I mean? Like I, I can't tell you when my sisters or mom or anybody ever had, you know, a period or anything like that. Uh, besides, you know, I've, I know I've seen the the boxes in the cupboard, you know, or in the bathroom of, of the uh, different um, things that they use, but I've never, i never seen it. You know what I'm saying? And so just from a, from a mother daughter uh, standpoint, you know, how important even is that in that teaching of this is how you take care of yourself. And uh, again, like you said, even with that still being, being able to give that message in a positive way where we're not ashamed of this natural uh, progression of, of womanhood, you know, this natural progression of, you know, body, your body cleansing itself and, and all of that. But just coming from a, a, a mother, you know, teaching, teaching their, her daughter or any young woman that, you know, maybe under her, under her guidance, you know, what is some of the things that, that, may be important even in that conversation. Yeah. So here's the thing. Unfortunately, lots of girls, even today, um, are taught very little about the menstrual cycle, like very little. There are grown women who, when they reflect back, you know, when they were 12, right, who learned nothing about it. So if we could just try to imagine, you know, we're 11 years old, we have had no introduction to it at all. And you go, I'm gonna keep it real. Okay. So you go to the bathroom, right? To pee and you see blood in your pants. That is shocking. Yeah. That is traumatic, <laughs> right? That bless their 11 year old hearts. They don't know what's going on. And so I have, so I have something called a period stories project where I interview people about how they learned about the cycle and all that. This is where I've gained these stories. And 
So, you know, these 35 year old people reflecting back on when they were young are still traumatized by that. Mm -hmm. Like it still brings tears, you know, to them as they recount the story to me and retell the story because they were so fearful. So there's a category of, of young people who are, were taught nothing about it. So man, that's traumatic. Then mm -hmm. There's a category of, you know, young folks who are taught that, well, now you're dirty, so now you can get pregnant, right? And that's the teaching. That's it, <laughs> right? You better keep your legs closed. You know, you nasty now and da 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 da, da. And, you know, um, you know, so that is um, the negative energy that's put on it. Like, oh, my God, it's going to be my fault, you know, if I get pregnant, if something happens, right? It's like, it's all on, on me. And so they learn nothing about the cycle because it's actually four phases to the cycle. And most people don't even know that. They just think they're on their period or they're off their period. And that's not the case. There are lots of things that are going on during all four phases of the cycle that are really important that would benefit everybody to know. And then, um, so just I just want people to imagine what it can be like if you are, you know, eight years old, nine years old, and your your elders, your parents come to you and start talking about the beauty of your body. And mm -hmm. this is what you can expect, you know, when you get to puberty. This is what's going to occur. Your menstrual cycle is actually a guide showing you how to take care of yourself, right? How to take care of yourself emotionally. OK, I'm not talking about just physically, but emotionally. So during this phase of the cycle, you're going to be moving and grooving and shaking during this phase of the cycle. You're going to have lots of creative ideas and you can manifest during this phase of the cycle. It might be time to slow down a little bit. You know, your body might be tired. You have fewer things on your calendar. You let people know that your temper might be a little short. OK, and, you know, during other phase of the cycle it's time to drink your tea, your hot cocoa, curl up on the couch, watch your movie marathons, you know. And so if everybody knew that they'd have more respect for it, because there are cultures that actually celebrate when a girl has her first period. And it's beautiful. The little girls are adorned in this beautiful garb and they got all these jewels on and it's a family affair. Right. It's a whole community event ushering, you know, this young person in through adulthood. It's fantastic. So those are why it's some of the, the ways and reasons that it's important, because I started off um, in this industry focusing on girls. And because I was like, oh, my goodness, they don't know what's going on. They don't know these basics. They don't know basics of their anatomy. Right. Um, some sometimes girls, um, because they don't know the basic anatomy, they think. And again, I'm going to keep it real. They think that the same hole they pee from is the hole that they bleed from. Right. Mm -hmm. Having no clue that that's two different openings. So that's where I started. And what I found out, because working with the girls, I have a nice little um, sort of ending to that where there's a nice little mother daughter connection to that. And that's where I really started learning about the trauma that a lot of grown women were still kind of hanging on to. And as they were looking at their daughters and wanting to do something differently, a lot of that negativity on how they were raised were com was coming to the surface. And so they needed some support too. So from that, I developed Rock With Your Menstrual Rhythm to show the grown women how to, to you know, to get down with their own rhythm. So it, it benefits everybody. Okay, okay. I want I want to go back a little bit and, and you were mentioning about the, the phases of the cycle, right? And so of course, uh, on this podcast, we definitely want to uh, give some information. We don't want to just be entertaining, but we want to offer some healing and some some knowledge in, in the way. And so uh, even, I guess, for myself <laughs> to know, because I definitely, like I said, I, I remember hearing remnants of the conversation, but definitely was not in on the whole conversation. If you could just talk to us uh, about the, the different stages of the cycles and how it flows, for lack of a better term, 
<laughs> and <laughs> just for those of us who may not know, you know, on, and so that we can leave with some kind of education in this in this area. Yes, absolutely. So I like to equate the menstrual cycle to, I call it the inner seasons, right? So we're all familiar with the weather seasons. We know spring, summer, fall, winter, and we know it's a cycle, right? So we know what to expect in fall. We know it's going to be cold in winter, you know? So we are familiar with the natural rhythm right so it's no surprises when summer comes right we we know it's coming mm -hmm. and so i equate that to the inner season so i'm gonna take you on a quick little journey through through the seasons okay mm -hmm. the inner season so i'm gonna start with uh the menstruation phase of the cycle because that's the phase that people are most familiar with right and so uh when a person is menstruating that phase of the cycle is equated with winter. Okay. Okay. So what do we like to do in winter? It's cold outside. We like to curl up, right? <laughs> the days are not as long. You know, the nights are real long. Uh, we need some comfort foods, <laughs> you know, uh, during winter. Uh, for a lot of people who menstruate, they need a little more magnesium in their bodies during that time. So a lot, a lot of times we'll equate chocolate with that mm -hmm. particular phase of the cycle because chocolate has magnesium in it. Dark chocolate is best. Um, so that's, you know, what's happening. And when we track the cycle, so it's important that people who menstruate track their cycle so they can develop patterns. So, and we think about for the most part, the cycle happening in 28 days. And I say for the most part, because that's a generalization. So for some people, it happens in 30 days. For some people, it's 26 days. But each person who menstruates needs to know their normal. So I'm going to just use the generalization. So when you're tracking your cycle, day one, starts on the first day that you start to have your period. So that's day one. For most people, again, on average, that could be five days, seven days. For some people, it's four, right? So you need to know your normal. So that is the winter phase, okay, or the menstruation phase. So what comes after winter? Spring, right? So spring is like new beginnings. You know, when we think about spring, we're so glad that winter is over because, you know, it was cold. <laughs> and spring is like blossoming, new beginnings, you know? Um, and so this is what we call the follicular phase of the, of the menstrual cycle. And this is roughly days you know, five through 13, somewhere around in there. Again, it's going to be different for, for everybody. Um, but this is the time for people who menstruate to, to like have those creative ideas, get stuff done, like you back in action now. Okay. <laughs> and so the next phase is what we call ovulation. Okay. And this is equated with summer. And so with ovulation, yes, that has to do with making babies. So if you want to get pregnant, then that's the time to get busy, um, you know, during ovulation. But ovulation, the ovulation phase is also about manifesting, okay? Manifesting those things that you want, your desires, you know, whatever that is. So it's not just about creating a child. It's maybe birth in a new business or, you know, a new idea at school or, you know, whatever that is, that's that time to really, really manifest. And so that's going to be roughly days 14 to 20. All right. And then the last phase we equate with fall, right? And that's called the luteal phase. Now, this is the phase that um, if anyone has ever heard of the acronym PMS, mm -hmm. people have probably heard of that, premenstrual yeah. syndrome, right? <laughs> this is where the, the stereotypical like B-I-T-C-H concept comes from, right? And I like to really refrain, refrain that, that uh, acronym from premenstrual syndrome to premenstrual self-care. So this is the time to really turn inward, 
to reflect. This is the time to declutter, right? And I mean, physical declutter, you know, cleaning up your closet, your office space, your room, whatever that is. But it's also the time to get rid of toxic people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's also the time to get rid of toxic behaviors because what often happens during fall is that you know a lot of the stuff that hasn't been working for us it shows up in our face and you know because of what's happening in our bodies we tend to have less estrogen um, during this time of you know of the cycle and without that estrogen you know we're not trying to collaborate <laughs> we're not trying to, you know, be good listeners. Okay? <laughs> we're not trying to work on no problems. We're just going to cut through the chase. Yeah. Like, no, you know. So, uh, by the way, if you don't menstruate and you're wanting to know the best times of the cycle to deal with problems is during spring and summer. That's when estrogen levels are higher and people who menstruate are more likely to be listening and have that loving ear and all of that. So that's gonna be during the follicular phase and the ovulation phase. Note to yourselves. Mm -hmm. um, so those are the four phases um, of what I call the inner seasons. And when everyone knows them, so let's say we have, you know, a husband or boyfriend, if he knows because he's been tracking with his partner the cycle, right? right. If he knows that, you know, she's in the luteal phase, you know, this is leading up to the menstruation phase, then this is the time to rub her feet or draw mm. her bath water or make her favorite dinner or get her favorite takeout. Like this is the time to show that you have her back, that you on board. So a lot of times what men will do is vacate. They'll be gone. Right. Like, out. <laughs> Deuces for five days. <laughs> right? Because, and it's not their fault. It's just because they don't know what to do. They don't know how to deal. So now they know how to deal rather earnest. Yeah. And, th and that's what I was going to say, because I, again, maybe just me being raised with so many women, um, that was my outtake on it. You know, uh, even in my marriages, you know, definitely paid attention to the, the times. Right. So I, I definitely probably wouldn't know exactly what date, but I can kind of figure, you know, when it's getting close or whatever, you know, and then as you learn your partner, you can tell by their mood changes and the way those things. And so I was the one, you know, okay, I noticed at this time, you know, this, like you said, uh, rubbing the feet or whatever, because, you know, you learn what they like. You right. know what I'm saying? Okay, this is what it is. All right. I know that you're going to ask for these three things. Let me already have it. You know, whatever, whatever that is. Or if you want ice cream? Okay, we already got it. You know, whatever. <laughs> so uh, that was me. But again, like you said, in, in some cases, a lot of men, um, because we're unknown, unlearned and un untaught in this area, we're just like, hey, I'm just going to disappear <laughs> for, for the next week or so. You know, I'm working late this week, you know, whatever it is to try to avoid um, the whole thing. But I, I think we do ourselves a disservice and especially our, our daughters and, and even our, you know, uh, partners when we don't step up to the plate to be able to understand and learn what's going on because it's, it's a natural, it's a natural cycle. And then once we get older, like I'm 47 now. So once we get into that age group, now we're talking about possibly going into menopause and that's right. a whole nother cycle. You right. know what I'm saying? And so we, if we don't learn the first cycle, <laughs> then we're going to be thrown off by the, by the next one. You know what I'm saying? So I think it, I think it's uh, important for us as, as parents, both sides, but definitely speaking from a man's point of view, uh, and as a father, that is definitely something that we need to be able to learn more about and be willing and open up to, to learn more about, to be able to not only know for the knowledge part of it, but then again, it gives us the opportunity to definitely connect with our, our mates, to connect with our daughters and, and help build that bond. Um, and even to, on the part of talking about the daughters, to by having those conversations with them, then it makes them comfortable with having a was having the conversation with the man of their life, whoever that partner is that comes on uh, later on, she, she's able to have this conversation and be comfortable with saying, this is what I need from you during this time. Cause he's probably unlearned too, you know? 
<laughs> so like, look, this is what I need from you. And they can have them, them conversations and be okay with it. So um, speaking of which, so like I mentioned at the very beginning, the way that we met was because you had sent me a, a send me a, a link about your programs uh, that's more focused towards the a dance, you know. So talk to us a little bit about the uh, the programs that you have and the differences within them and um, just so we can learn more about that. Yeah, absolutely. So I'll, uh, I have three and so I'll save the dad one for last. So the first one is called Power to the Period. And so that one uh, is for those tween and teen girls and their mm -hmm. moms. Um, I do that in groups. I do it one-on-one, -on -one, in person and virtually just depends, right, on what on what people need. And it's beautiful. Um, the feedback that I get from that, first of all, creating the safe space to have the conversations. The young people love it. They love it. We're not judging them for the questions that they're asking. And the, the mother-daughter connection is so I mean, like, I can't even express the words um, about how powerful that is. So that's the power to the period. Then, as I mentioned earlier, there's so many grown women who um, could benefit from knowing the phases of the cycle and how to use it as a guide for self-care, because a lot of their old stuff from when they were, you know, mm -hmm. teenagers comes up, right? So that's the rock with your menstrual rhythm. Again, uh, that can be group, one-on-one, -on -one, virtual, in-person. Again, another uh, just sort of powerful thing to help grown women really embody and embrace the magic of their cycle. That's really, you know, what that is all about. Um, and then finally, for the superstar dads, <laughs> I have the dad's puberty playbook. And so what that is all about is for those compassionate dads, those dedicated and devoted dads who want to learn how to support their daughters during this process, who want to, you know, lean in, who, you know, acknowledge that they're not ready, <laughs> who, you know, want to acknowledge that they behind the eight ball, you know, and trying to get prepared for this, but really, really want to then that's that dad's uh, puberty playbook. And so in there, it's, it's all about, you know, the strategies, the most effective game plan to reduce the fear and increase the confidence to be able to support their daughters with puberty. So those are the various programs. All right. All right, man. So doc, I, I, I'm so glad to, uh, to have you on, Dr. Carmen, because I think that even as we were talking about uh, that you just mentioned a, a second ago about the safe spaces. And when we talked about this on the, the Girl Dead Discussions podcast, and even why I would definitely want to have this conversation again, because as a father, having this conversation, it begins to even create that safe space for dads and for men to have this conversation, not only with you know, uh, the women in their lives, but even with each other. You know, because we probably talk about, <laughs> I it probably would come across our our conversations first, you know, what I'm saying? before it got to, you know, having the conversation with definitely without with their daughters. They definitely that's gonna take some uh, some work. <laughs> but I want to be able to at least start building a safe space for us to have these conversations to open up the um the space for dads, uh for brothers, for uncles, you know, to have these conversations like okay. We have daughters now. We have nieces now. You know, we have young ladies, uh, granddaughters in, in my case, um, but young ladies who may just be under our our um, um, influence at, at any time, you know, that may be, uh, unfortunately, in, in my space, uh, fatherless daughters, right, who we are in contact with and who are who we are, you know, helping to, to guide on their way who don't have a man to have this conversation with and, you know, may not be able to have the conversations with their mothers if they don't feel safe, safe enough to do it. And so just as men, as the, the leaders, as the leaders of the home, and then just as men, period, <laughs> no pun intended, <laughs> we have to be able to have these conversations and be open to having it. So uh, that's definitely was one of the reasons why I wanted to have you on. So um, Dr. Carmen, I want you to have the last word. 
I want you to have the last word. I definitely want you to leave us with a word of advice, inspiration, however you feel, um, um, to leave us definitely the fathers, the parents as a whole, but definitely the fathers, uh, leave us with something that we can take away uh, with this to, to think about and also your social media handles and where we can find you at. Uh, I'll give you a second to, to think about that. Um, to my listeners, first of all, thank you guys for tuning in to the Deal to Heal uh, with EJ's podcast. Make sure that you guys are checking us out on our website. That's the dealhealfulfill.org, dealhealfulfill.org, which is our official website for everything that has to do with um, the podcast, uh, basically with myself and everything that I'm involved with, whether it be Work, uh, workshops, the podcast, speaking engagements, uh, because yes, of course, I am a speaker. And so you guys can book me to come and talk to your students, definitely at your schools or, or even your churches or organizations at dealhealfulfill.org slash booking. Uh, you can find that information, but just more information about everything that we have going on as a whole in general, as a company, including the podcast, including workshops, including uh, the eBooks and things like that. Um, and also our, our T-shirt line, Deal to Heal Tees, and our eBooks. Make sure you also are going to eBooksbyEJames.com. So you go to eBooksbyEJames.com to check out the eBooks that we have uh, there because, of course, we are a self-sustained podcast. And the way that we stay on the air is that you guys uh, purchase the things that we have made available for you guys in order to support us uh, financially. So definitely want to make sure that you guys are checking us out on those spaces. Also, I've been blessed to be a part of a organization called the Forgiveness Mission. And one of the things that we do, we hold uh, free virtual forgiveness workshops every quarter of the year. Uh, you can go to um, Eventbrite in order to register for that, or you can go to forgivenessmission.com. Again, we talk about forgiveness, what it is, what it's not, who it's for, forgiveness of ourselves, forgiveness of others, you know, everything surrounding forgiveness, which I think is very important for us to know and understand. And so I'm very happy to be a part of this movement. Again, that's the forgivenessmission.com. And we have free virtual workshops every quarter of the year. So whenever you're listening to this, either one just passed or one is coming up. So you can go to forgivenessmission.com and register, or you can go to Eventbrite and register under also forgivenessmission.com. Last but not least, I told you guys how you could win. Uh, I, I told you guys I would tell you how you can win $100 from the podcast. And you can win $100 from the podcast by entering our super subscriber contest. So what must you do? First, you must subscribe to our YouTube channel, to our Facebook page, and to our podcast on Spotify. And after you've done those three things, you want to text the word WIN, W-I-N, to our text line at 866-326-0730 in order to qualify to win $100. The contest is ongoing and is random, which means that anytime I can pull a name and that you can be the winner. And once you're in, you're always in. You don't never have to uh, re-up. Once you're in, you're always in. You always have the chance to win. So make sure that you guys, again, join uh, our Super Subscriber Contest by first subscribing to our YouTube channel, to our Facebook page, and to our podcast on Spotify. After you've done those three things, text the word WIN, W-I-N, to the number 866-326-0730 in order to qualify to win the $100. Dr. Carmen, again, let me say thank you so very much uh, for being on. I really appreciate you being uh, on the Deal to Heal with E. James podcast and also on the Girl Dead Discussions podcast. Make sure you guys go check that one out. That one was uh, a really good, uh, nice and entertaining <laughs> on the Girl Dead Discussions podcast. So I want to thank you again for being on both podcasts uh, to definitely uh, pour into my listeners and bring value uh, to, to my platform. So I definitely appreciate it. And I want you to have the last word. So the floor is yours. Thank you so much. So I just really want to encourage all parents to take bold action with this, take bold action. So if you are a mom, acknowledge whatever sort of negative stigma you might be carrying about, you know, the menstrual cycle, it's not your fault. It was a sign of the times. That's how you were taught, but be open 
to the possibility that it doesn't have to be a curse. It doesn't have to be a negative thing. Um, if you have a daughter, reach out to her. If you have a son, it's important to teach our sons about this uh, as well. Um, if you need some support, I'm here. And then for the dads, absolutely lean in to this because, you know, as a dad, it's really easy to be focused on wanting to protect our little princesses, protect, you know, daddy's little girl. Um, but what happens is that we don't often prepare her for life when we're focused on protecting her. So lean in to this aspect of her development and continue to be the model for, you know, the type of men that you would want in her world when she, when she grows up. So, you know, the best way to receive that type of support, you know, I am on Instagram at period of empowerment. I have a website, but the best way is really in our Facebook group. And that is our empower her Facebook group for parents who want to dignify their daughter's life periods. And that's where you can come with your fears, right? Share them there. Come with what you're struggling with and get support and feedback from like-minded folks. So I really hope to see y'all um, in the Facebook group that's Empower Her for parents who want to dignify their daughter's life period. All right. All right. And we can't end it no better than that. Again, thank you, Dr. Carmen, for being on. To my listeners, thank you guys for tuning in one more time to the Deal to Heal with E. James podcast, where my mission is to help people to deal, heal, and fulfill, to deal with your problems, to heal from the uh, <laughs> to heal from the pain, and to fulfill your purpose. Until next time, you guys be blessed. Hey, guys, I know you're enjoying the podcast. However, don't forget to join our text line at 866-326-0730. That's 866-326-0730 in order to receive text messages with new events and things that is going on and new episodes as they release. All right. See you in a minute. Thanks for listening to the Deal to Heal with E. James podcast. Remember to listen, like, subscribe, and share. This episode has been brought to you by Deal to Heal Teas. Put some inspiration in your situation. Wear an inspirational tea and be inspired all day. Let's go to Deal to Heal Teas.myshopify.com. Remember, our mission is to help you to deal, heal, and fulfill. Deal with your problem. Heal from the pain and fulfill your purpose. Thanks for listening.